Hello, denizens of the internet. Well, today I'm going to be upgrading my Hackintosh to Mojave version 1. Not, well, not 1. I, I believe it's uh, 10.14.0.22, so almost 1. So stay tuned. We're going to find out together. <laughs> I mash the delete key. <clears throat> Coffee. After all that dirty screen adventure, and I apologize for the dirty screens. I know you're going to give me a hard time, so give me a hard time. I deserve it, but shut up. I, I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't realize it until after I started shooting it. Anyway, so beyond the dirty screens, I have Mojave loaded on my copy of High Sierra. Uh, from my machine. Now, I'm not doing it on the original version. I've actually made a copy and I loaded uh, Mojave on that and it's been great for the last few days that I've been testing. It's been rock solid, hasn't crashed. I am very impressed that Apple has made um, you know, this upgrade without really any kind of incident that I've I've seen. So uh, fantastic. Now, uh, for all you Hackintoshers out there, I'm running an AMD graphics card. So that's very different from those of you who are running NVIDIA because you're gonna have to wait for the, uh, uh, the new uh, web drivers from NVIDIA to, uh, to run and see, uh, see whether it works. Uh, on my last video, I actually asked you folks with regards to High Sierra, whether uh, you NVIDIA users were having problems with the, um, with, the web, uh, with the web drivers because I have heard that since Sierra, Sierra was very solid with NVIDIA cards, but High Sierra, not so much. And I would say it's probably 70-30. So for the number of people who have responded, 70% of the people out there have and continue to have problems with uh, their NVIDIA cards on High Sierra and 30% um, not at all. So uh, that's not a scientific poll, but uh, I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of Hackintoshers are now moving towards AMD cards like the 580, 570, 560, and the Vega cards. Sierra, what's it like as a, uh, a Hackintosher? Well, very good. I'm going to show you a few things that I find very, very interesting, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my process of upgrading. Now, those of you who are coming here because you saw, you know, some text that was referencing Mojave, I'm not going to give you a, a review. That that's not what I'm doing. Okay, I'm. Uh, you go, go, skittle away, le -le -le -le, skittle away to some Mac site, and uh, you're going to, and to get your Mojave. Um, a fix, but you're not going to get that here. And those uh, Hackintoshers out there who are interested in Mojave and the features of it, well, then you can go to the Mac site too. Uh, this is not a full-blown uh, Mojave review experience. I'm just going to cover up, uh, cover up, cover. I'm just going to cover off a few things that I like, and also talk about my life as a Hackintosher when it comes to making the big leap from one OS to the next. So uh, I went from High Sierra to Mojave here. Now, what do I do? The first thing I do, well, um, you know what I'm gonna do first? I'm gonna use one of my favorite new features of Mojave, and that is Command Shift 5, which allows me to start Screen Recorder immediately. Very cool. So the first thing that you do is open up your EFI folder on your Hackintosh, make a copy of its contents. So that's the first thing that you do uh, to find your EFI folder. Obviously, I think you know this, you open up Clover Configurator and then you click on the mount EFI and then you get your choices here and I've already got it uh, mounted. So here's my EFI and I'll just drag this and drag it into another hard drive uh, or a thumb drive, any place uh, except for your original boot drive. Um, and I make a copy of that and I date it. Uh, uh, so that is the first thing that you do. Now, I don't do anything with the configurator, uh, Clover configurator here. The next thing I do is I go out onto the internet and search for the latest version of Clover EFI bootloader. I download that and I update uh, my boot drive with the latest version of Clover. So once you've got both those things done, uh, you're part way there. 
The last thing that you do is find all these different kecks that you need that are associated with your motherboard and your sound and your uh, ethernet uh, cabling and setup and your graphics card setup. Um, we're all different, so you don't copy what I'm doing here, but I've got a folder on my hard drive called latest kecks, kecks? Kecks. It looks, sounds like I'm, I've got something in my throat. I've got, I got some phlegm, I got a kecks. Kext stands for kernel extension. I have a fresh folder here of all the kernel extensions that I use. You just need to make sure that you do the research, go to the different websites, mostly all GitHub sites, and you download the latest versions of these and put them where you need them, um, either in your EFI folder, in the other folder, or uh, in your Mac main folder library slash extension. So, uh, you, and you should know where all these things are. Uh, oh, uh, let me show you a trick. I like to make sure that I don't wipe out any of the original Apple Kext files. So what I will do is go into my library and you'll see what I've done here. And I go to extensions and you'll see what I've done. See the little uh, uh, purpley dots? So when I build the initial Mac OS, before I start updating it with all the uh, Hackintosh text files, I go in and I select them all and then I mark them with this little purple dot. So if I have to add anything new to it, I know that it's not an official Apple text and um, I'm not going to be afraid of deleting whatever it is that Apple has done. Mojave, a couple of things that's interesting. Well, the most, uh, most interesting thing actually is the Finder, quite frankly. Um, it's got all sorts of uh, new features. Uh, you can even, uh, let's say if I hit the space bar and you do quick view, I am able to uh, edit this picture right here in quick view. I mean, that's kind of cool. I don't have to open up preview. I don't have to open up another application. Um, I can make edits right to this picture um, right in uh, quick view. The other thing that Apple has done, which is subtle, and I believe it's true. This is, this might be just me, but uh, I think they've improved the targeting mode of the uh, cursor when it comes to uh, hovering over the edges of your finder window to be able to expand and contract it. It was always something that bothered me because you had to be really slow and really finicky about it and then you'd miss it and you'd click on the desktop and things would disappear. But now I'm sure they've changed it. This uh, has made things a lot uh, nicer and more fun. The other thing that um, Apple has done, and this is, uh, oh, uh, I'll let, let me talk about the, the main, the main headline feature is dark mode, right? So I'm in dark mode right now and there's light mode. That's the same as before. And here's dark mode. Isn't that exciting? But I do want to mention something. And Apple, you need to be listening to this. In light mode, in the original version, like in Sierra and High Sierra, I was able to create dark menu, dark dock. Now, you can't do that anymore. If you want dark, you got to go all dark. Once you've gone dark, you never go bark. Uh, okay, anyway. So in light mode, I would like the dark menu and dark dock back, please. Ah. Uh, Hello, Apple. Yeah, hi, uh, Stephanie. Yes, my name is uh, Paul. Good to uh, good to talk with you. Yes, um, I wanted to ask you about Mojave. Pardon? Oh, oh, it's uh, oh Mojave. Sorry, like like, like Jesus. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, it, it would have been funny if you called it Mo Oive. <laughs> you, you don't get it. Uh, okay, it, is, it, it, it doesn't matter. So, uh, uh, pardon? Oh, you want the serial number of my my computer? Oh, I, I I'd love to, but I'm uh, I'm at the airport. Yes, you can you hear the plane? Yeah, I'm on my way to Chicago uh, for a, a bonsai tree convention. Yes. Uh, oh, look look, it's taking off. Uh, there there, it's gone. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, I don't have my computer with me, and and I don't need it. I, I'm just complaining. I want. I will. It's, it's something I know. I've memorized it. Okay. Um, I just wanted to know where the dark menu and the dark dock option went. Yes, uh, it was in the system preferences in the in the general options. Um, you used to have a dark menu and a dark dock option, and now all I have is a choice between dark mode and light mode. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll wait. Okay, okay, no, I, I understand. Uh, but what if I don't want 
dark mode and I want light mode, but with a dark menu and a dark dock, like just the way it was before in High Sierra. I, I really like that. I, I don't like the dark mode. Okay, it's, it's not contrasty enough. It, it, it's, it's difficult, uh, more difficult for me to read. Yeah, yeah. So you're checking in on it. Okay. Well, yeah, it, it's in the system preferences. Yeah, it's in, it's in options. Uh, it's in the top left. Open up the system preferences. Options. Uh, general is in the top left. Yeah, general. You want general. Okay, open that up. Okay, now you see it? Yeah, you see dark and and light. But when I click on light, the option for the dark dock and the uh, dark menu is gone. So there's there's no way of getting it back. My my only option is dark mode. Oh, okay, isn't that short-sighted? You've taken away a perfectly working option. Okay, look, I, I know you can't do anything about it. Next, uh, you'll be removing the USB and SD slots from the MacBook Pro. Uh, no, I'm not yelling. Uh, that, that was a, that was a, another joke. Okay, uh, you know, you're going to lose customers this way if you keep pissing us off. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I might just go off and build a Hackintosh. No, 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 that, that, that's a hypothetical statement. No, 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 I, I don't know. I don't, don't even know what it is. Okay, bye, Stephanie. The last thing that you will notice when you use Mojave is that there's these odd applications. The odd ones, for instance, that's the, the voice memo. This is from iOS. I'm really happy about that. And apparently you can get your voice memos off your iPhone now easily, as opposed to uh, uh, doing all that other, you know, opening up iTunes and downloading it and trying to drag and drop it and organize it and things like that. Apparently it's way, way easier. And there's other applications in here that are, you know, clearly come from uh, iOS. So the final thing that I, I wanted to show you and, and talk to you about, because this does have an effect on Hackintosh users, is the way the Mac OS now updates uh, software and the OS. So before, if you got um, you, know, you got a little notification and then you would go into the App Store and then you would take a look at it and choose to download it or not uh, after you evaluated it and after you read the forums and, and saw what other people were talking about in terms of those updates. But now they've moved it out of the App Store and they've put it into the system preferences. So if I look at this, you'll see I've got a little red thingy here. So what does it tell me? This is now working like an iOS device. Mac OS is now updating or now it's checking its updates and I have, uh, let's say, uh, Epson printer software update. So this is not, uh, you know, uh, Mac OS related. Now, obviously you can click on automatically keep up to date. You don't want to do that. Do not do that. As a Hackintosh user, you do not want the Mac to suddenly, Apple to suddenly, <laughs> You know, uh, update your OS without you knowing it because it can completely, uh, you know, camboozle your, your, your Mac. You want to have control over, over these things. So under advanced, download new updates when available, install system updates and secure updates automatically. Uh, no, no, we don't want to install Mac OS updates. We don't want to install app updates from the App Store. Uh, no, we want nothing. We want to be able to check on this manually on a regular basis. Uh, and that's one of the aspects of safe Hackintoshing. No means no. That's it for my Hackintosh update. So far, it's been wonderful. And I'm going to report back to you. And you feel free to report back to me in the, uh, in the comments section below. I look forward to reading them. Till next time, denizens of the internet, so long. <laughs>